of afterlife. Beautiful. How are you? Exciting times. Uh, in America and for the rest of the world, I think. Well, you, you certainly you certainly voted, um, which is a good thing, of course. Uh, where are you? Uh, where are you watching this from? Let me know. Is this working? It seems to be working. <laughs> I've had gigs cancelled. I could just be talking to myself again. Um, uh, just say well, uh, my eyesight is obviously you're saying hello and all that where are you, where are you stressed upset it's not over yet what, what are you upset about I don't know who side you're on um, going slightly mad crazy in the US someone from Hampstead that's down the road Vancouver Montana, Devon, Chicago, Liverpool, Turkey, Bournemouth, Liverpool, two for Liverpool, Liverpool in the lead, Philadelphia, Ireland, Toronto, Texas. Um, good. Right, let's, uh, let's kick off. Forget the pandemic. Forget the election. Forget all natural disasters. Forget that we're a, a dying species on a dying planet, circling a dying sun. <laughs> Let's get to the important stuff. This is from Tiana. Thoughts on the existence of slugs? It's a good question. I have got thoughts on the existence of slugs, and I'm, I'm all for it. Um, slugs. Well, they're... Uh, what can I tell you about slugs? They're... Uh, Mollusks, mollusks, for more specifically, gastropods, which I think means stomach-footed. They're basically a, a thing that's a foot with a stomach. They basically eat and they move, and that's it. Um, they're about, uh, when I say they're mollusks and more specifically gastropods, it, it, goes, it goes phylum class, order, family, genus, species. And so that's all the branches. You start off with a, well, you start off with a kingdom, so they're animals, and then, then it's the phylum, and then the phylum has different classes, and each class has different orders. Phylum, class, order, family, genus, and then species, and that's a specific, that's, you know. Um, and there, there are five to tens of millions of species. Um, but yeah, so the, uh, the phylum is mollusks, I mean soft-bodied, you got slugs, snails, sea slugs, um, octopus, and then you got uh, gastropods, um, as as uh, which are slugs and snails. And I think snails came first. They're about 150 million years old, right? So they've they've been around for a long time. They haven't changed much, but. Slugs evolved from uh, uh, snails. They um, they lost their shell. They had their shell first, and then they they've still got a little residue cell inside. If you opened up a slug, which I don't know why you would, um, a lot of people think a slug is just a homeless snail. It's not. It's an evolved like um, rather like the slow worm. Isn't a snake? It's a lizard, and it lost its legs. It didn't need them. It goes. Oh, it said, "Listen, I'll be honest. I do a lot of burrowing, and the legs get in the way. Right? So I'll lose them. Be more like a snake." And some snails obviously went. I don't need this shell. I want to get into places. I'll lose the shell. Um, I think the shell was more important in the early days of being a slug. Like 150 million years ago, it sort of protects you from stuff. But then, as soon as like elephants came along I'll be honest this shell doesn't do a lot this shell doesn't do a lot against a mammoth <laughs> I'd rather be a slug I'd rather be free um, so that's what I think of slugs and they're basically food for every 
every vertebrate, type of vertebrate, the birds, um, lizards, mammal, just everything eats the slug. The slug is basically food. It just eats plants. It knows its place. Um, that's all I know about slugs. Good luck to them. Uh, Freya says, we all know you're a huge dog lover. What is your favourite breed of dog? Oh, that's so difficult. It's always, it's the, my favourite breed of dog is the last one I've seen. Um, listen, I love the classics. I, I think, I, I just don't think you can beat a, you know, a beautiful retriever or a big old Labrador. Um, but then, you know, you, you start mixing them up. Because they're, they're, it's, 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 uh, it's selective breeding, isn't it? A dog is a dog. Um, and uh, I saw a dog the other day that was half German Shepherd, half Labrador. Amazing. The ears didn't know what to do because the Alsatian was going, let's do that. And the Labrador was going, let's do that. And so they sort of met in the middle. So I do like, I do notice the ears on a dog first. I, I listen. I love, I love, I just love all dogs. I love every breed of dog. I love a dog that likes me. I can't stand if a dog ignores me. <laughs> I go, hello, he goes, yeah, whatever. I go, mm. Mm. So uh, I love a, uh, some dogs are a bit too task orientated. They just, they look at the ball or they, I want a dog that loves me. Or at least it looks like it loves me. <laughs> Even if it's just going, feed me. I don't care. <laughs> um, but I do like a big old mixed up mongrel rescue. I, I, I honestly, I, I, this I love. I love all dogs. Um, Claire, I hope your gig went well last night. It did. It was great. It was emotional because everyone knew we were, it was the last night before lockdown, and I was going to do more. Um, but it was great, and I know. And I know the. Um, the new show's going well now, so that's that's that was nice to get a couple in and work on it. Um, uh, but it was it was great. Uh, do you get heckled much on stage? And what's your strategy for dealing with hecklers? Do you just ignore them, uh, or have uh, a come back? I, I don't. I ignore them. Do you know what? I don't get heckled. No, I think. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know why I don't. Uh, I think it's rarer anyway in really big shows because they know you can't really hear them. So I think that that usually happens in sort of clubs and and uh, you know comedy clubs and pub. There's more of a culture of that. There's no point in shouting from the back of an arena. And if you're at the front, you've paid too much. You don't you don't want to ruin the show. It's so rare. I think I've had a couple of people shout out and the whole of the tour. And even that's usually something like, we love you, Ricky. Um, you know I mean, you don't need to deal with it, but you should ignore them because, you know, and it's usually early on as you walk out. Uh, so no, I don't. Um, I remember on Humanity, there's a bit where I'm talking about not having kids and I'm in the middle of it and I'm getting angry about this uh, mythical child. And someone shouted someone, and I what? He went, he said, it's a waste of a life. And I, I, I went, it put me up, I went, shut up, you cunt. Like that, right? And the audience sort of laughed, and I got on with it. And then as I was carrying on, my subconscious worked out that actually, he was sort of complimenting me, like, he was sort of saying, oh, that's a waste, you, sh you should have kids, you'd be a good dad. And then I did the routine, and then I went to get a drink, and ten minutes, I said, sorry, mate, when you shouted that, were you saying, he went, yeah. I went, oh, sorry for calling you a gun. <laughs> but it's sort of, I, 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 did a, I didn't want it to be an unjustified put down, because he was just a bit pissed, and he was being nice. So I felt really guilty about putting him down. <laughs> and it sort of preyed on my mind. Um, so, uh, and sometimes heckles will be nice, you know. Um, so you just got to judge it. But I think it's, if it's just a, ignore it. And they feel like a twat and you move on. Because there's a certain part, there's a certain part of a heckler that wants to be 
notice. They they sort of want to be part of the show, like a like a troll. They want you to if you ignore them, they don't exist. Um, depend. I mean, if they were consistent, you know, you've got to deal with it. But it just doesn't happen at my gigs. It doesn't happen at theatre gigs. It doesn't happen at arena gigs. It happens, you know, when they're having a drink at a table in a club, I think. Um, Ollie comic strip. If you met your 40 years younger self, what would you like about him? <laughs> or is it her? <laughs> and what wouldn't you like? What would your younger self like about you and what wouldn't he like apart from all the fat unbelievable so what would my late 50s fat grizzled old <laughs> lazy <laughs> rich person think about my 20 year old struggling skinny enthusiastic self I don't know um, I think I was alright I'd probably say don't, don't don't worry about it don't worry about it it'll be fine don't <laughs> but then that, it happened so he was fine what would he like about me um, I don't know uh, he, my, he probably if he knew it was me he'd be shocked that that he lived that long <laughs> and then was that fat he'd go I didn't know you could be that fat and still be alive at that age I go yeah the medicine's amazing the medicine's amazing in 40 years mate have another drink don't worry about it <laughs> it's tough that question isn't it um, Gunner you see a report on the news that you've died in a freak accident. This never ends well, does it? These questions for me. So I see on the news that there's a report that I'm dead. Do you call everyone right away or watch it play out? Well, I suppose... What would be the first thing I'd do? Um, I suppose I'd have to call immediate family, wouldn't I? And then uh, I might, what I'd do is I'd, I'd replay it on the news, tape it and tweet it, <laughs> tape the news that I died. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's a funny question. That's happened to a few people, isn't it, when they do that fake trends on Twitter, RIP. Maybe... What if I um, what if I thought it was real? What if it's like one of those horror films when you're watching it on the news, and you go, <laughs> "I'm not dead," and you look round and Jane's crying over my body, and I am dead. I'm a ghost. You good, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like things like that, but the build-up's too much, isn't it? Those films when it's like a, a shock ending, you think, well, yeah, but well, that took 90 minutes. But <laughs> <laughs> just just tweet the tweet the twist. Um, I love a good horror film, but they're they're rare, aren't they? Um, there's so few good horror films. Lots of things ruin a horror film for me. The first one is not taking it seriously. If I if I think that the director's got a wry sense of humour, that annoys me. I go, well, don't do it then. Don't do a spoof horror film, or don't try and get away the both. Don't 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 sort of undermine the cliche because it it ruins the tension. Just I want I want a sincere horror film that's fucking scary and horrible, and and you know I want someone who's trying to make the audience fucking terrified. I don't want to try and make me laugh. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I, uh, I like something psychological. I, I really like something psychological. 
some of this, just a, the tension. I did, when I was growing up, I liked things like, you know, vampire films and zombies. Zombies were stressful because then it was never ending. Like, I, I like the, I like the, you know, the zombie trilogy and, uh, uh, yeah, just getting, opening the lift and they all come in like, oh, fucking hell. Oh, that's too much. Um, but now things like that don't make me, I'm not scared of that. Just something psychological, just a face at a window is still good, isn't it? That's really good. A face at a window is still good. <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom mirror cliche. It's good. Oh, we're going to clean your teeth. Look down, look up. That's always a good one. <laughs> um, uh, wait, what's... Uh... So, I, yeah, I would call immediate family gunner. Um, uh, what if they hadn't watched the news? And I called them and said, I'm not dead. And they go, what? I'm not dead. Oh. All right, cheers. Bye. Um, Bella. Bella the Whippet. On a good day, how many pigeons do you think you could catch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm not fast enough to catch a pigeon, Bella. I've, uh, I've um, saved a few pigeons in my time. Once, right, we are in New York and it was like December. It was freezing. And I, there was a pigeon just uh, on the pavement and people sort of like walked past. And I went to it and it didn't move. I thought, oh, fucking hell. I picked it up and we were walking home and it was, uh, I, I was I carrying it for about 25 minutes like that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And then it sort of wriggled and just flew off. I think it had like just knocked its head or something. I just thought, fucking hell. And then it came to. Um, so that one was easy to catch. <laughs> a fat stunned pigeon is really easy to catch. But uh, no, I, I, my, um, I'll be honest, I, I, I don't think many people can catch a pigeon. They're pretty cool customers. They, leave, they always leave it, like when I'm in a car and they're sort of pegging someone. And the car, I think we've hit it and it goes, oh, it just leaves at the last minute. They're clever little things. Um, right, here we go. Here he is. It's Rupert. Uncle, have you ever had any DIY home improvement disasters? Like my idiot mum, who when her and dad lived in a flat, decided to decorate the lounge and wanted the bottom half of the walls papered and the top half painted. <laughs> she decided whilst Dad was at work and after some wine to help speed things up. So she measured a piece of wallpaper, cut it to size, then proceeded to cut the rest of the roll to that size. Only thing was the walls were out. The walls were out. <laughs> weren't out the walls were out and so uh, not even and was left with pieces cut way too short um i wouldn't know where to start with wallpapering i i just didn't know where to start i've seen it done my mum used to do it a fucking ladders on fucking on chairs and planks between that she used to she did the stairs. I don't know if she did the stairs. Um, but I, uh, no, I, I can't do DIY. I haven't got the patience. I just haven't got the patience to know you've got to do it. I know there's ways to do it, but I think, no, I can't do all that. Um, I did try to uh, build some shelving once. We lived in a, our first sort of flat and it was horrible. And there's nothing there. And uh, I found three bits of wood in a skip and I thought I'll make a shelf and I had nothing to make it with right I think I had I think I had a hammer and a couple of nails so what I did was I put I just put the two bits of wood like that and put the bit of wood on top of it right and I nailed them like that and put it against the wall and as soon as I did that it just sort of went like that because there was no so it was like like that now there was a parallelogram just against the wall right <laughs> right <laughs> and uh, by the time Jane came home, what I'd done is I'd put another nail here 
tied a bit of string to it and pulled it and nailed it in the wall. So <laughs> this shout was three bits of wood with a bit of string <laughs> nailed in the other wall. <laughs> Uh, what a fucking shambles. It was dreadful. It was fucking shit. <laughs> you got to do things properly. You can't, whoa, like me making a suit out of curtains. <laughs> I think that's the worst one I've done. Um, I'll tell you a good tip. What I used to do, I don't know why I saw it, um, but we used to find bits of wood and things in skips to make stuff. And I'll tell you a good tip for a shelf, if you get a nice bit of wood, bricks. Like, a couple of bricks, shelf, a couple of bricks, shelf, it looks really cool. Um, but I've had a few of them. Uh, once, I thought, I, um, when I was in a band, because studio time was really expensive, rehearsal time was really expensive, uh, I went to, like a little local corner shop, and they had a basement. And I said, oh, can we use that to rehearse? And I went, yeah. So I, I soundproofed it, right? I found, we, me and um, my band, uh, we got loads of mattresses, and we put it all around the walls of this little basement, right? But then when we came to rehearse in the summer, it was like a sauna of piss. So it was like 90 degrees down there, and all the piss in the fucking mattresses came out. And it was like, it just stank of hot piss. <laughs> and so we went upstairs and said, we can't, we can't do it anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, what a disaster. So I think to answer your question, Rupert, yeah, I have had a few DIY disasters. Um, uh, have I tried to fix anything else? I tried to fix a chair today in my office with sellotape. One of the things broke, so I tried to do it with sellotape. <laughs> yeah. In the end, I just, no, just swapped it out for a different chair. It's not going to work. <laughs> You've got to have a go, haven't you? Right. One last question. It's from Kermit. You awaken? <laughs> you awaken? <laughs> it's like translated from the Brothers Grimm or something, isn't it? You awaken with the mouth of an anteater and really short arms like T-Rex. Oh. So, like that, yeah? Oh. You go downstairs for breakfast only to find Jane has signed you up <laughs> for piano lessons. <laughs> How do you cope? I could do that, couldn't I? I've got short arms, but I've got normal hands, have I? Or have I actually got... Because if I actually had the arms of T-Rex, that wouldn't be that bad, would it? Because you think that his arms short on him, but on me, they'd be all right, wouldn't they? But I'm assuming I just, I just lean forward like that. Would my nose get in the way? If I'm trying to play piano, I keep hitting my nose. Because I'm like that. So I go... Oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. So I've got... So... I'll be honest, I think the piano lessons would be the least of my troubles. I'd come downstairs with the nose of an anteater and short arms, and I'd go, oh, fuck, the piano lessons. That, would, that wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't, it, that's a drop in the ocean, mate. Unbelievable. Well, sorry if I didn't get to your question, um, I sort of try and see them through the day, these questions. They come in randomly. And, and I try and cut and paste them so they're all in one place. And I miss some and forget some. And, yeah. 
Uh, so sorry if I didn't get to yours, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Listening to fucking cats and dogs ask me about losing parts of my body and dying. Um, I'm just trying to think of other DIY disasters. Once, right, um, when we were at school in the library, me and my mate Jack were mucking around. Right, you're meant to be it's meant to be reading time, right? And, and it was sort of like, you know, what a library's like, but it was like loads of shelves and a sort of sort of a desk behind each little partition of shelves, right, where you know you, you're meant to be sitting quietly, and. Uh, Jack thought it'd be funny to climb up, right, and look over at me to surprise me. And he got the top and went like that. And I looked up and laughed. And then the shelves broke. And he just went <laughs> like that, right? And it was an almighty crash. And all the shelves fell on him. And the teacher came round and looked at him like that. And Jack picked up a book and went... Have you got anything on frogs? And the teacher went mental. <laughs> right, right, like the idea. <laughs> he thought, I'm going to get in trouble anyway. I've got to make the most of this. I've got to go down fighting. <laughs> I'm going to go down laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, well, there you go. That was a load of bollocks, wasn't it? Um, I've had lots of uh, requests from people to sponsor this, but they keep coming up with ideas. You know, really good money for doing, doing things. And I don't want to do anything. I just want it to be this. So any companies, um, I'll do it if I can just say, this is a load of bollocks, sponsored by What's It, thanks for the money, is a donation to animal charities, and then just do the normal show. I don't want to do, I don't want to do anything but this bollocks. And... You know, it, you know, so, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, I wish I'd never asked now. <laughs> I'm going to turn down really good money because I don't want to change this shit. I mean, that's ridiculous. Why? 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's stay sane. Uh, good luck with the... Counting all the votes in America. Um, good luck with the lockdown in England. Uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll keep you posted when things are back to normal for, for tickets and gigs and everything. Um, be nice to animals. Uh, cheers. How do I... Hold on, where's the thing to turn it off? It's gone. Oh, no, it's done. <laughs> Tattooed by everyone. <laughs>